The scene showed a girl who always spent her days on the scheduled agenda arranged by her parents. Wherever she went, the bodyguards would always be by her side because she was an important person. She was Samantha McKenzie, the only daughter of John McKenzie, the President of the United States at that time. Samantha lived in a big house like a palace, but she felt like being locked in a prison. Fortunately, there was her father's personal assistant named Liz who accompanied her all the time. She never had a friend before, but when she found out that she would soon live in a campus dormitory, which meant that she could feel the life of a normal teenager her age who could be free to do whatever she wanted without the need to follow a densely packed agenda, she was immediately overjoyed. Hearing that, Liz could only remind her to behave because no matter what, she was still the president's daughter and every eye would monitor her, especially since her father would nominate again for president next year. In the middle of the night, when everyone was sleeping, Samantha sneaked into the kitchen to devour her favorite chocolate cake, and shortly after that, her father came and joined her. He knew the habit of his only daughter who tended to go hungry in the middle of the night. At that moment, Samantha persuaded her father not to bother driving her to campus the next day. She just wanted to live her campus life without being the center of attention. But no matter what she asked, the very next day, her parents still insisted on accompanying her to campus. As soon as Samantha arrived at the campus, she walked to her room. Her mother told her that she would share a room with a woman named Mia. Her father then advised her to always take good care of herself. After that, they said goodbye to attend the next campaign. Unfortunately, even after they left, Samantha was still under the supervision of four bodyguards. Not long after her parents left, Mia showed up and was annoyed after finding out that she would be a roommate with the daughter of the president. Didn't want herself to be restrained, at that very moment, Mia wanted to change rooms but Samantha prevented it by showing her disappointment because Mia was in fact not following her life motto, which was ready to do anything. Upon hearing that, Mia gave up her intention. Besides, thanks to sharing a room with Samantha, she was splashed with luxurious facilities in her room. She then invited Samantha to a party but unfortunately, Samantha couldn't because she had to meet with the chancellor and the deans on the campus. During that meeting, Samantha regretted her decision as she should have joined the party together with Mia instead of being tormented by boredom in the event with the deans. The next day, when lectures started, all the students lost their focus because of Samantha's presence. Nobody listened to the lecturer who was explaining the material in front of the class, making Samantha feel uncomfortable. Fortunately, there was a boy who tried to divert the attention by asking a question that made Samantha happy. After the class ended, Samantha immediately thanked the boy and asked him to chat. Apparently, the boy's name was James. Maya, who saw her, immediately teased her, saying that her taste in boys was alright. Samantha just smiled to herself. In the evening, Mia took Samantha to the campus's annual event while wearing bikinis. While Mia enjoyed herself at the pool, Samantha was trying to enjoy the event, but soon, some boys made fun of her using a water gun. The bodyguards saw it as a threat and immediately secured Samantha and ruined the party. As a result of the incident just now, Samantha was immediately taken to her father's office. She then asked her father to stop restraining her life and threatened to leave the campus if her father refused her request. She said that nobody would befriend her if things like this kept happening in her life. Finally, her father agreed and now, Samantha had fewer bodyguards with her. As soon as she returned to the dorm, she immediately looked at the balcony to check if her father wasn't lying and sure enough, when she looked out the window, there were no more bodyguards who monitored her from the next room's balcony. The next day, when Samantha was out walking with Mia, she accidentally saw a group of students listening to an oration about how bad her father's leadership was while serving as president. There, Samantha couldn't help herself but leave the place immediately, and when he was invited to debate, she chose to keep walking away. Didn't want Samantha to overthink it, so Mia invited her to have fun. Unfortunately, there was an incident that made it to the headlines in a magazine with a photo showing Samantha accidentally almost dropping Mia's pants. Liz then warned Samantha to always maintain her attitude so as not to tarnish her father's good name. She knew her father must be annoyed right now and asked the call to be forwarded to her father. She immediately apologized and promised to be more careful. Mia, on the other hand, couldn't believe such a trivial thing. Moreover, an accident could make it to the headlines of the news. After such an incident, journalists started following Samantha, and while she tried to enter her room in a hurry to avoid the journalists, Mia refused to open the door. She had no option but to enter the nearest room which turned out to be James' room, the dorm caretaker. Samantha was shocked. James then lent his hoodie and hat to Samantha so she could trick the journalists out there. They then left the dormitory with ease. James then invited Samantha to eat at a cafe. Samantha seemed like to know more about James but he kept talking about random things as if he tried to divert the topic. For James, there was absolutely nothing interesting to talk about his life. Shortly after, an old woman came to take photos with Samantha. Samantha immediately did it, and after that, Samantha and James continued their journey. They were unlucky when the journalists found out Samantha's disguise. 
Finally, James invited Samantha to sneak into the cinema and watch a movie. James then bought some popcorn and mixed it with chocolate. Samantha was reluctant to try it, but it turned out tasty. Samantha said that popcorn shouldn't be mixed with chocolate, but James said that it was worth a try. He said that sometimes they had to break a rule to find a new inspiration. Later that day, they arrived at the dormitory safely and Samantha still talked about James' life, from asking about his favorite game to his favorite food. For Samantha, it was the happiest day of her life so far. A few days later, Samantha intended to invite James to go see the bonfire later that night. Mia then helped write the message on a whiteboard in front of James' room, but later that night, when the bonfire was starting, Samantha kept looking around because James didn't show up. Mia, who saw that, immediately cheered Samantha, saying that it seemed that James was unable to attend because he had to carry out his duties as a caretaker of the dormitory. After that, Mia told Samantha that she invited the boys she liked from high school, but unexpectedly, when the guy came to fulfill her invitation, he instead approached Samantha. Annoyed by what happened, Mia immediately left there. She then deliberately made her dorm room a party place to avenge Samantha. She even doodled on Samantha's family photo to vent her annoyance. She was jealous of seeing Samantha always being the center of attention of many people while no one cared about her. Not only that, people often accused her of being close to Samantha for fame. Upon hearing that, Samantha denied it and said that the attention of so many people was really beyond her control and Mia shouldn't have taken other people's words for granted if they didn't match the reality. Later that day, Samantha spontaneously told what just happened to James. She knew that nobody wanted to befriend her because being around her would only make people excluded from the world, but being born to be the president's daughter was not her wish. She could never choose her own life. Her life has officially become public consumption since she was born. She felt she had no privacy at all. Didn't want Samantha to be drowned in grief, so James immediately took her for a walk to get some fresh air. After returning from their date, Samantha thanked James because thanks to him, she could for a moment feel the life of being an ordinary person. For some reason, spending time alone with James felt so easy if she didn't have to be afraid to be herself. When she returned to her room, Mia had been waiting for her. She regretted everything she had done. She knew that she had gone too far. After saying sorry, they made up and hugged. The next day, Samantha invited Mia and James to go to a place using her private plane, where on the plane, Mia could do manicures and pedicures while James could play video games as much as he wanted. Turned out, Samantha invited them to attend a party. She then introduced Mia and James to her parents. Not long after that, James invited Samantha to talk. Just when James wanted to talk, Samantha invited him to dance, and later, when Samantha was interviewed by the journalists, suddenly, an incident happened. The guards, including James, secured her. That was when she found out James was part of her bodyguard. Samantha's heart was broken, shattered into pieces. At home, Samantha asked for an explanation from her father for lying to her about James. She felt like the stupidest person in the world. Just when she started to fall in love with James, the universe broke her heart, but even so, she didn't want James to lose his job. She asked her father to let James continue to be by her side, even if only as a bodyguard, because Samantha knew that her father was only trying to protect her. The next morning, James no longer pretended to be a student, let alone a dormitory caretaker. When James talked to Samantha, she seemed to avoid him. To prove James's feelings towards her, she tried to make James jealous by dating another guy. Even she desperately changed her appearance to something completely different from the usual herself. She then lost control after she got drunk and James secured her from the bar by carrying her. James then carried Samantha to the campus dormitory. He was really sad to see the new Samantha, the one that wasn't Samantha that he knew. Samantha, who heard about it, immediately said that this was how it was if she lived without James by her side, and that was when Samantha asked James to be honest with his feelings. She knew what James was doing all this time was not just doing his job, but because he shared the same feelings with her. She wondered if it was because of her status as the president's daughter that kept James from expressing his feelings. Maybe everyone pretended to be nice to her because she was the president's daughter, but James denied it and said that they shared the same feeling, but no matter what, they would never be together. Not only because of his job, but Samantha's father would not allow it. James said that if he could choose, he would follow her anywhere not because he had to do it, but because it was his wish. In the morning, Mia showed news that Samantha was suspected of dating her own bodyguard, James. Samantha then looked for James. However, unfortunately, James had been replaced with a new bodyguard. Since that day, her day had never been the same. The news about her dating James made her very tired. Her mother then came to the dormitory to pick her up. She wanted Samantha to temporarily stop taking classes until things got better, considering that soon the presidential election would be held and Samantha's father had lost some points due to the problems that Samantha caused. With a heavy heart, Samantha went home with her mother. Meanwhile, James was undergoing a disciplinary trial. 
He confessed that he had tried to put his feelings aside, but the more he kept his feelings, his love for Samantha got stronger. And if he had to lose his job because of that, he was ready to bear it. In the end, James was suspended and would be transferred to another place. On the other hand, Samantha accompanied her father to attend an important meeting. She could only be silent until her father asked her to be more mature, even though she had already done it. She had thrown away her ego when she decided to go home with her mother. Long story short, Samantha's father was re-elected as president for the second time. On the night of his inauguration as president, he invited Samantha to dance. At that moment, he apologized to her for not giving her more attention and for all the incidents she had gone through her entire life. In the middle of the dance, her father had prepared a surprise for her by inviting James. He then let his daughter dance with the man she loved. After dancing, James said goodbye to Samantha to continue his duty out of the city. He then gave her a car key, saying that her father had decided not to hold her life back and that she had her freedom now. Samantha immediately went outside and saw her dream car. Finally, she was ready to start her new life as a normal girl, even though there would always be a shadow of her father, the number one person in the country.